So Casey, in my last answer, I mentioned acute myeloid leukemia. Can you tell us a little bit more about AML and how it relates to MDS? Sure, so MDS and AML are really part of a continuum and the definition of acute myeloid leukemia as it arises out of MDS is somewhat arbitrary. It's based on the number of blasts or leukemia cells usually that we are finding in the bone marrow, although we can also use the number that are in the blood. And that number has traditionally been 20%. Uh, there are some patients with myelodysplastic syndrome who run between 20 and 30 percent blasts that we will still treat as myelodysplastic syndrome, but nowadays we use the cutoff of 20 percent to distinguish acute myeloid leukemia from MDS. Fortunately, most patients with low-risk MDS or patients with MDS-related anemia alone will not evolve into acute myeloid leukemia over time, even if they have a few blasts in the bone marrow. But unfortunately, some patients will acquire new genetic mutations or changes that may make the disease more aggressive and may lead to progression. We usually see signs of this, uh, such as when the blood cell counts drop, like platelets and white blood cells, um, usually when the patient has only anemia, we focus on treating the anemia and are less concerned about acute myeloid leukemia. And do you require a bone marrow biopsy to make the diagnosis of AML? Well, if a patient has more than 20% blasts in their peripheral blood, technically that can diagnose acute myeloid leukemia. However, there are so many new therapies directed at acute myeloid leukemia that we really prefer to perform a bone marrow biopsy in order to capture all of the changes, especially genetic, that may have occurred to lead to the development of acute leukemia because they help us now with treatment and prognostication.